Now that we've discussed open sets and closed sets in detail, and I'll leave links in the description to my lessons on those topics, it's about time that we introduce covers, open covers, finite subcovers, and compact sets. We'll introduce all of those topics with examples in today's lesson. And I'll leave links in the description to my videos going over each individual topic with additional examples if you find yourself wanting more explanation. The biggest deal here is compact sets, which we will go over more in depth with different definitions and proofs in later videos, and I'll leave links to those in the description. Let's begin with the various covering definitions then we'll go through some examples, and then we'll be ready to define compact sets. Let A be a set. Then we say that a family of sets is a cover of A if A is a subset of the union of that family of sets. So in this notation, we're saying that this is just a set containing all sets U alpha, where alpha is an element of some indexing set S. That could be anything. The indices could be 1, 2, 3, etc., or A, B, C, D, etc., just any index which happens to be convenient. But if we take all of these sets in this family, every U alpha, and union them together, and they contain the entirety of the set A, then this family of sets is a cover of A. For example, here is a cover of the closed interval from 0 to 3. This cover contains the closed interval from 0 to 2, the open interval from 1 to 4, and the open interval from 5 to 7. If we unioned all of these sets together, they would contain the closed interval from 0 to 3 in its entirety. They would also contain some excess, but that's not important. What's important is that this set is covered by this family of sets. So this family of sets is a cover. Notice that this set in the family, the open interval from five to seven, is completely unnecessary, but we can still put it in there. This is indeed a cover of the closed interval from zero to three. You may notice in this cover of the closed interval, two of these sets are open, but one of them is closed. If we have a cover of a set A that only contains open sets, so every set in the cover is open, then we call that an open cover of A. We'll see some examples of that in a minute. Though certainly, we could easily change this cover to an open cover if we just turn that closed interval to an open interval and change the zero to a negative one, for example. This is now an open cover of the closed interval from zero to three. But let me change it back to what it was originally and we'll go over the next definition. A cover of a set A may contain infinitely many sets. However, if there's some finite subset of it, which also covers the set A, then we call that finite subset a finite subcover of A. Notice that our notation here implies that the indexing set F is a subset of the indexing set S. We're saying that we've got this family of sets, this cover, that contains all sets U alpha, where alpha is in this indexing set S, but then we're considering a finite subset of that family. So this finite subset contains all the sets U alpha, but where alpha is from some smaller indexing set F. But again, the idea is if we have a cover of A, and we can take finitely many sets from that cover and still have a cover of A, then what we've got is a finite subcover of A. Notice that this definition is completely separate from the definition of open cover. So it's not necessary that our finite subcover is an open cover, although it will often be the case that we're looking for finite subcovers of open covers, but again, they don't have to be open covers. Looking again at our blue cover up here, if we took away that open interval from five to seven, we would have a finite subcover. Indeed, technically by definition of subset, the cover itself is a finite subcover of itself. 
Now, let's take a more in-depth look at some examples. All of these examples are open covers. After we go through them, we'll introduce the definition of compactness and then look at these examples again through that lens, which will have us thinking about finite subcovers. But for now, let's just think about these open covers. Here's an example. This is an open cover of the open interval from 0 to 2. This is the set containing all open intervals from 1 over k to 2 minus 1 over k, where k ranges from 1 to infinity. You can imagine how if you take some element from this open interval, maybe a really small one that's super close to 0, certainly that element is covered by this family of sets. We just have to consider a sufficiently large k so that 1 over k is less than the small chosen number from this open interval. Similarly, if you chose a number really close to 2, we would just have to consider a sufficiently large k so that 2 minus 1 over k is even closer to 2. And hopefully like that, you can see how this family of sets completely covers the open interval from 0 to 2. If we didn't allow k to go to infinity and instead restricted it to say 100, then we would no longer have an open cover. You could think of the number 0 0.001, for example. That is a thousandth. It's in this open interval, but it's too small to be covered by this family of sets because the smallest number in that case would be 0 0.01. Certainly 0 0.001 would never be covered. Here's a more straightforward open cover of the open interval from negative 2 to 1. This family contains four open intervals. So, indeed, it's an open cover. It's got the open interval from negative infinity to 0, one from negative 1 to a half, and so on. In this cover, the open interval from 0.1 to 9 is unnecessary but there's no problem having it there. This is still a cover of the open interval from negative 2 to 1. And again, it is an open cover because every set in this family is an open set. Finally, let's consider an open cover of the closed interval from 0 to 2. This is just like our first example, except now we need to cover the endpoints as well. We need to cover 0 and 2. So we can take our cover from the first example, just the set that contains all open intervals from 1 over k to 2 minus 1 over k with k ranging from 1 to infinity, and then we can union it with this family of two open intervals just to cover those endpoints. This open interval includes 0, and this open interval includes 2. So again, we've completely covered this closed interval entirely with open intervals. So we've got an open cover. And now we're ready for the definition of compactness. We say that a set A is compact if every open cover of A, we've been talking about open covers this whole time, we say a set's compact if every open cover of A contains a finite subcover of A. That's a compact set. There are other equivalent definitions, and we will discuss those in other videos. I'll leave links in the description. One definition uses sequences and subsequences, but for now, let's focus on this open cover and finite subcover definition. Coming back to our first example, we had an open cover of the open interval from 0 to 2. If the open interval from 0 to 2 is compact, then this open cover must contain a finite subcover, because for a set to be compact, every one of its open covers has to contain a finite subcover. In this case, there are no finite subcovers of this open cover. You can imagine how any finite subset we take from this open covering will have some greatest k value, say we call that big M, in which case 1 over big M would be the smallest number in the subset, and anything less than this would still be positive and so would still be in this open interval, but it wouldn't be in the finite subset, and so we can't possibly have a finite subcover of this open cover that still covers the open interval. Thus, we have an open covering of the open interval from 0 to 2 that happens to have no finite subcover. This is enough to conclude that the open interval from 0 to 2 is not compact. Again, for a set to be compact, 
Every one of its open covers must have a finite subcover. This one does not, so the open interval from 0 to 2 is not compact. Looking at our second example, the open interval from negative 2 to 1, we have this open cover. Now, this itself, by definition, is a finite subcover, but certainly we could also delete the open interval from point 0.1 to 9, and we would still have a finite subcover. So it's possible that the open interval from negative 2 to 1 is compact. This particular open cover does not prove the opposite. However, it turns out that this open interval is not compact. Again, we have an open cover here, which certainly does contain a finite subcover, but for a set to be compact, every one of its open covers must contain a finite subcover. We certainly haven't established that, and it turns out that this open interval is not compact. And you can probably see how that would be, as we could look at an open cover like this, for this open interval quite easily, and it would present the same problem that it did in the first example. We would not be able to find a finite subcover, and that would demonstrate that this open interval, and in fact any open interval using the same method, is not compact. Now let's look at our last example, where we had an open cover of the closed interval from 0 to 2. This open cover does have a finite subcover. Certainly, this set containing two open intervals doesn't cover the closed interval all by itself. However, all we need to do is include the right open interval from this set, and we'll have an open cover with only three elements. Basically, we need an open interval from this infinite set that connects these two open intervals. So we need a big enough k value so that 1 over k is less than 0.1, so that the open interval will start in here, and a k value that's also big enough so that 2 minus 1 over k is bigger than 1.8, so that this open interval will go from here all the way to here, including everything that's in between. Then we'll have a finite subcover. And here is just such a finite subcover. It includes the two open intervals from the set on the right, and then it also includes the open interval from this set that goes from 1 over 11 to 2 minus 1 over 11. So this completely covers the closed interval from 0 to 2. Indeed, it's a finite subcover of this open cover. Now, just because we found a finite subcover doesn't guarantee that the closed interval here is compact. Again, it needs to be the case that every open cover contains a finite subcover. But as it turns out, this closed interval is indeed compact. And like I said, in other videos, we discuss equivalent definitions and characterizations of compact sets, which will shed more light on all of this. But this is certainly a nice definition of a compact set, as it really emphasizes the fact that compactness sort of gives us a passageway to finiteness. We can take an open cover, and it might be infinite, but if it's an open cover of a compact set, then we can start to consider something finite instead. And a lot of times, that's going to be really critical. It's going to be a really helpful definition to allow us to use something finite rather than something infinite. So I hope you'll look forward to our further discussions and proofs regarding compact sets and how we'll end up using this definition as we continue studying real analysis. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and please consider supporting the channel on Patreon if these lessons are helpful for you. I'll leave links in the description. Thanks for watching. It. Parted hearts and heavy minds weighed down by the catalyst Sinking to the stomachs that plummeted at the accident Shot off all my habits to addicts ripped by a catapult Pulled apart the patterns in man that stood as a manifold Man of many pains with a number that he had to call Calculate the damage of himself and what's collateral Being told he's not enough until he swallowed